Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Do you know what it pays to be with somebody who's done this and been doing well, it? Well, I didn't know about no eyelashes. See, you learn something new okay. every single day, Brains, here on the edge. We are here Hello. with my guest, the beautiful Lisa Yvette Jones. What's Hello. going on, Queen? She is the founder of Eye Care Leadership. We want to talk a little bit about what is Eye Care Leadership. What does that mean? How are we shaping that? You are a dynamic speaker. You've been on so many stages. Uh, I've been watching you and following you. And Brains, if you haven't seen her, you haven't been online, okay? You work with a great Les Brown. Is that your mentor, one of your mentors? He really is. And just started back yesterday being my mentor again for the next six, seven weeks. Oh, my goodness, yes. I've been in the room with him a few times. Oh, and, uh, he is, And I'm telling you, he is a warrior. He has really yeah. overcome so much and had so much to pour into individuals. Yes, so, and I was... I would say he's forever my mentor, but he's back being my coach again, you know, as of last week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Because we all yeah. do some coaching and that's what yeah. you're doing. You're doing some coaching too. But I also, did you, didn't you write a book? I did. You know, I'm part of anthologies. Okay. So I have three anthologies. One is the first one was Fearless Women Rock, Courageous Women Finding Strength During Their Storm. Mm. And it was compiled by Dr. Missy Johnson. And she came together with 12 other women, including herself. And we just wrote about our stories. And mine mm -hmm. is from cancer to come back, how my faith made me whole. You had cancer? Yes, stage three cervical cancer. Ouch! 2009, I was diagnosed and had not one symptom. So when I tell you that cervical cancer is the blood pressure that there is no symptoms for it. You know, it is that number one killer, um, could be a number one killer with women who um, are going through it because not every woman will have symptoms. I received two separate pathological reports, not them going by one other reports, but two separate pathological reports that came back and said the same thing. Papillary serous carcinoma of the service is serious, it's vicious. It, um, if you don't have surgery within six, I would say at least seven days, then we're not going to even open you up because it's going to start feeding on your internal organs and you're not going to uh, make it. But how many of you know, I went to my chief physician. What? Do you hear <laughs> the, me? You, I went went to to my the, chief you went to the architect. Okay. Yeah. Yes. They okay. gave me, the doctors gave me my diagnosis, but I trusted God for my prognosis mm. until he told me I should live and not die. And here I am. I didn't have that surgery um, in seven days as they wanted. I had it a month and a half later. And here I am today, 13 years later. Wow. And for, <laughs> until, until it's really time. <laughs> so after, after your prognosis and after your surgery, you know, Let's dial back a little bit. When you got sure. when you got the diagnosis, you was like, you, you, "This can't be real. You're not talking to me." You know this this yeah. the c word. I, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. So after you come out of the fog, and you have the surgery, and you look at yourself renewed, restored. What did you say to yourself? I then knew that everything that I had been telling other people about trusting God about believing that, um, you know, you are healed and made whole and that we just truly have to trust it. Because it's one thing when you're telling people that, I'm sorry, I'm fitting with my neck. It's one okay. thing when you're telling people that, but it's another thing when you have to live it and live your own words. So in coming out of it, I then had such a confidence in the word. I had such a confidence in healing and wholeness. I had such a confidence in trusting, you know, that, I knew that now when I went forth and I was ministering to women and telling them, you know, you, you really have to put your faith and trust in God if that if you're a true believer. And if you do that, you know what? I do believe that you are going to come out on the other side, just like I did. I know. And so but, I, but, but Lisa Yvette now, you know, let's, no. keep it, let's keep it 500. Okay. Okay. 
500. Every, <laughs> 500. I'm beyond 100, okay? 500. You can't get nothing with 100 no more. You can't. You can't, okay. <laughs> but, but real talk, okay? So mm -hmm. I understand all of that because I'm a believer. Like I told yeah. you at the beginning of this conversation, God showed up in a mighty way. Yes. To, today I was in tears in a public oh, place. Wow. And mm. it was so powerful. It was so powerful. Wow. I, oh, I talked you. about it, but I'll tell you about that later. But yeah. what, what do we say to the person that is going to make the transition? How are we preparing their hearts? How are we preparing them for the inevitable? Because it is a transition. We're maybe not all going to survive. We're not all meant to survive. We're organic. We're all going to expire. Let's, you mm -hmm. know, let's just know mm -hmm. that. But what do we say to that person that's struggling right now? Because I want to encourage them as well. I would tell that person to see yourself on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that kept me. I said, you know what? I am going to go through. Going through is still movement. It doesn't mean I'm stuck or have stopped. So I usually tell people who are in a stuck state, can you just take a moment to see yourself on the other side of this? What would that look like for you? And then I said, you may have lost your hair. What will that mean for you? You may have lost your eyelashes, your eyebrows. What will that mean for you? You may be weak and it may take you a moment to get your taste buds back, but what will they look like? What would that look like for you? And some people, they just stop. And then they'll say, I'm still living though. If you take me on the other side of this, I see myself living. So then I said, from that moment on, then start thinking of the things you want to do on the other side of this. Because then for you now, it's not over. And you fight with everything you have in you. I fought. And let me tell you, it wasn't enough for me to have my faith. I fought. Mm -hmm. I fought through this. And let me tell you why. There were days when it was so difficult for me to even get out of the bed that I would have to pray, Lord, can you just help me swing one leg over, mm -hmm. then swing the other one over. Now, can I sit up? Once I sat up, then I said, okay, can you give me the strength to just stand up and make it to the bathroom that's 10 steps away? And then once I got there, it was like, now, I just need the strength to sit down. <laughs> it was one step after another. Then I said, wait a minute. One day I said, this will not have me. The pain was excruciating. And I then said, okay, if I, once I get in that shower and I put on my clothes, I'm going to walk to my front door. I'm going to walk down my walkway. I started talking to myself and right. telling myself, you are going to do this. And before I knew it, for every talk, I took a step. For every encouragement, I had to take a step in that direction. That a preach right there and right. a teach. So right. I got in my car and literally to turn the keys in the ignition took everything in me. And I did it. Now, I wasn't being dangerous and driving. All I did was took a trip around the block. Mm. Once I could take a trip around the block, I then knew I can take a trip around two blocks, three blocks. I would then come back and fall out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, but I you, did it. I fought. You have been a motivator and a team builder for a long time. You had an illustrious career. Are you still with Mary Kay? I'm with Mary Kay Cosmetics, but I'm also with the federal government. So I do have a full time career where oh. I um, oversee teams and um, right, you I do also... uh, in the human resource capacity, right? No, actually, it's within. Um, it, 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 I, it's an area of, of government that I, I really keep close yeah, sure. okay. because of the work that I do. Okay. Yeah. So I, I can't, I don't publicize it only because it just raises a lot more questions. Well, no. And then, and, and that's not necessary because we already know enough yeah. about the federal government. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. But the reason why I bring that up is because of your ability to build a team, to motivate other mm -hmm. individuals, mm -hmm. to pour into them. Uh, that is a gift. I love it. That is a gift. And I know that when I was speaking from the stage, um, and I'm speaking, you know, now through Zoom and from the microphone, that yes. there is a certain, I don't know, a certain feeling that you get when you captivate the audience. It's a return of electricity. It's a banter back and forth because yeah. you feed off of the audience just like they are yeah. gravitating to every word that you say. What Absolutely. does it feel like for you when you just have, you know, everyone in the room under your spell? How do you feel? When, 
that is, um, it is really something to connect. And connecting is so important. This, that is something that Les Brown tells us all the time. And I really give him credit for the way he's mentored me in my speaking. He said, it's one thing to get up there and talk. He said, but when you can connect with your audience, he said, then you're, you're, you're speaking, you're sharing. You're not up there to tell them anything, but you're up there to share your story because there are parts of your story that is going to intersect with the majority of the people that have come to hear you speak. People already have a glimpse into who you are before they, you even come to the stage. And he said, the whole point is to get there and give that connection. And once you start seeing the connection, you start seeing the head nods and you start seeing the fingers pointing and go, right. I understand, mm -hmm. or the people looking to each other saying, yes, I understand. Then I realize I've made that connection because there are just certain things that are universal. If you're going through, you want to know how I came out on the other side as well. You want to know some of the things that I did to get through what I'm doing so that, you know, so you can hold on to some of those things to get through your challenge as well. What is it like to build a team? Do you, uh, you know, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of responsibility because they're looking to you like, they you, are. Look, like you look to less, you know, um, they have something, you have something that's continuously pouring out of them. But what is mm -hmm. it to connect with a team and get them yes. motivated and get them to move? You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that'll be sitting in the room that's just jaw jacking. They do, they do. The whole thing up front, I tell anyone, and I get asked this question a lot because I have successful teams and have had decades of successful teams. Even my director called me in one day and said, what are you doing? We've purposely given you a new team every year just to see how you're going to connect with them because mm. it's amazing that you and your team still come out on top and they're new. How do you do it? And then I said, the whole thing is, is transforming and humanizing the employment experience for them. I said, the minute that we understand that employees are whole people, they come to work as Nana as mama, as daddy, as auntie, as uncle, as caregiver of their fur babies. When we realize that we are dealing with a person who is a whole person in totality, everything that they come to work with, we then have to make sure that we are available to receive them in their person and mm -hmm. then make sure that they carry out the mission of the agency. And here's one of the things that I tell people every time they come on board. When we hired you, we said that there was no one else better than you at the time we hired you. That's your floor now. You are now here to show us and to continue interviewing for your next, um, your next job. One of the things I want you to know is I am your partner in your success if you will allow me. I said, so here's the thing. This is the expectations that I have of you. And I have a nine page memo that I go over every team member. I wow. go over with every team member day one when they come on board. So from day one, they know my expectations from day one. They know that this same smile will be the one that helps develop you and move you to your next level. This is also the same one who will have those coaching conversations to let you know that this may not be, have been the best choice for you. What right. can I do so to what, help you move on? What happens a lot of times is when you put that much personal care into it. A lot. A lot of companies, oh, yeah. a lot of companies will say that that's coddling and that's mm -hmm. handholding. And mm -hmm. we don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. they better because it's a new world with this DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's yes. a whole different space. People want to be called by their pronoun. I was at a meeting the other day and somebody <laughs> they said, what's your pronoun? I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> I'm we, we, they, then, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know but it is very yeah. important. And people are not having that conversation too because people want to be acknowledged the way that they want to be acknowledged. They do. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it has been so challenging um, after COVID. Now the great resignation, nobody wants to go back to work. Um, there was a deep divide between blacks and whites and Asians yeah. and yeah. Mexicans. So what do you say to us to pull us together as employees in the space, not even the upper level management, exactly. uh, but, but how are we to have our space and our boundaries? Yes. So respect people under the DEI. Yeah. The, and that you just said it, respect people. 
-hmm. respect. Remember, everyone's opinion is not yours and it's okay for people to have them, but it also opens up wonderful dialogue and conversations on things that people really may have had some question about. I say, you know what, be able to sit down and have that intelligent conversation. Mm -hmm. It's okay. For instance, when the George Floyd um, incident happened, I have majority non-Black um, you know, team members, mm -hmm. okay? So one of the things that I had to do was pull my African-American men close and say, I'm here. If you need to talk, right. whatever you need to talk about. So you open up the space. But one of the things that also had to do um, is open up the space to let people know that the pink elephant is in the room, okay? Right, right. right. So taught people how to be present with everyone. I taught them how to give space to people who may have an opinion, may, you may not agree with it, but here is how to hold space. And you know what some of my, most of my Caucasian employees wanted to know, how do I hold that space? Right, said, what, what do I say? Wait a minute, wait, one of my girlfriends listen. told me, she says, oh my God, I'll do anything. I'll use my white privilege. I told him, I said, baby, it's not a visa card. <laughs> you can't I'll wait. use my white privilege. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I said, but all you have to do is a lot of times is do nothing and be silent. It's but think silent. about your responsibility. Each of us, even black people, because you know, black people, we can be rough. Mm -hmm. We feel that we can say whatever we want to say mm -hmm. because we've been bullied. So yeah. it can be reverse discrimination. Mm -hmm. So I just say, you know, wherever people are in their space, be a good listener. Ask mm -hmm. a person. If you're not sure of their, you know, gender specific, yeah. then ask them, you know, um, how, how should I refer to you? Don't say exactly. you're a man or a woman. You know, how should, you know, how do you like to be acknowledged? And with the work that we do, we do have to ask people that. And I tell the team members all the time, I said, just ask. How do you wish to be preferred? What, how do I address you? Right. What is the best way to do that? What makes so, you feel comfortable? Open the exactly. space for them and inviting and let them know. And you know what? Uh, don't be so judgmental because there's yeah. things that are going on inside of your shell that mm -hmm. people are not aware of. They're but not. I want to ask you some fun questions about you. Some things that maybe people don't know. Okay, let's do I could that. Talk, I could talk about team building all day because that's something I absolutely love and enjoy. It I is. Know. I, I love building and developing teams. You know, my model is train them up, watch them grow, let them go. Next, mm. and that's so important. There's a lot of times mm -hmm. people want to pigeonhole you. No, so they don't no. want to do that. And mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate in my career, but I've you know I've pushed it. I yeah. push the envelope where I have said, you know, I want to learn this. I'll do mm -hmm. some informational interviews. I will uh, have a lunch. I'll mm. pick up a book. I'll go sit yep. and observe in a different apart department. You have to be proactive, brains. You do. You really do. So, but I'm their partner. As long as I'm their leader, I told them I'm your partner with you. I, I will definitely be there with you and help you. But there's nothing that brings me more joy than when I have to do a reference. I've done like four of them. So I've just had four team members peel off. I have another wow. one, two, two that are about to peel off. So they're about to give me a whole fresh team because they said, well, you keep your people keep being promoted. I said, I'm a developer. So mm -hmm. as a leader, here's one of the things I, I did want to mention about team building. As mm -hmm. a leader, you have to know your strength. If you do not know your strengths, then you are going to be lost in your people. Because I know that my strength is that of a developer, then people know that when they come to my team, you're not going to leave the way you came. Right. You are going to be much better. You are going to be more strategic. You're going to be more well-rounded so that you can go anywhere and be successful. And that's what they're doing. So when I tell you know my leadership, guess what? I have six people now that are about to leave my team. They are going on to new positions. They said, what are you doing? I said, what I do best. I Absolutely. develop. I Absolutely. train. I that's so to important. Yeah. And it comes from within. You know, it comes it's from inside. So let's ask you some fun questions. Okay. All right. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, what appliance would you be and why? That's a good one. I would be a stove. I think I would be a stove because I like the fact that you can control the, the temperature. Mm. I like the fact that I can do 
multiple things with the stove or on the stove or however I can warm, I can cook, I can bake, I can, you know, I can dehydrate, I can, you know, turn the heat up, I can turn the heat down. So it would you be an electric stove or a gas stove? I would want to be an electric stove. And I say that because that's even more controlled. The fire is fine and uh, is good at looking at the embers and all of that. But I think I just have a little bit more control over the electric. Now, of course, I the power goes out, that's another story. <laughs> I know. I'd probably be a teapot because I like to spout off. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, I think I, that whole thing of control is what, is what I think what drives me with that. <laughs> what brings you the greatest joy? Outside of family and kids, what brings you personal joy? This. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I'm doing right now, being able to share my story or a part of me with the world, this has brought me so much joy. And not only that, when people come to me and tell me one thing, and I was thinking about this on the way home in the car Mm -hmm. and and didn't realize you were going to ask that specific question, but I was thinking about a, a, a speaking engagement I did last weekend. And one of the persons put in the chat, wow, that and they put the statement that I made. They said that just helped me with everything that I'm going through. Wow. That statement right there. Now, mind you, there were 500 statements, you know, and comments, you know, in the chat regarding um, the, the conference. But when that person quoted my um, statement and said, this is what I needed. Now I can go back and face, you know, my situation. One statement, one line, right. but guess what? I shared a line that someone shared with me to help me through my issue that I was going right. through at the same time. Because everything is repurposed, you know, it, it, it there's, nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. What are three things it, that you absolutely can't live without besides those eyelashes? <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I can't live without is is my relationship with the Lord. It is crucial. It is powerful. One thing I can't live without is my peace and making sure that I maintain that. And another person I couldn't live without is my son. I'm just... My son, he's everything. He's amazing. As a matter of fact, um, tomorrow he's planned a trip for us for the weekend. And this is my grown baby. So I'm so... Um, I'm so excited because I don't, I, yeah, I'm the type like this, save your money, spend the, you know, invest your money. You don't have to spend that much money on me. But, um, he said, mom, for your birthday, he said, I am taking you out of town. And so don't have your weekend plan. We, we have something. So I have to realize he is my grown baby now (laughs) and I accept it. But you, you've molded him, uh, to be the man that he is. Yeah. So that's very, very important. What's your favorite yeah. food? My favorite food is salmon. To be it. honest with you, it's salmon. I, I, hands down, I try to say it, you know, oh, I have a variety of them. But when I really think about it, salmon is my favorite. It really is a nice um, grilled salmon. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. I am. And my chia seed crackers that I make. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. You have to give me the recipe for that. I will. Three ingredients. It's awesome. Really? So. Yeah. As you look back over your life, what would you like your legacy to be? I would love my legacy to be in leadership that I cared, that I am one of those leaders that believe in cultivating authentic relationships to empower. That's that care. And I care and that I respect it and employ enough to know that it is important for me to transform and humanize their employment employee experience. That you cannot be on this earth working for someone, whether I have them as an employee on the job or in my personal business, I want them to know that I value them. So at the end of the day, I want people to know that I cared and that I value them and that I love the Lord. Well, that is a huge undertaking and you are an amazing woman. Please share with my brains any current offerings that you have, you know, the book where we can purchase that uh, so that they can get in contact with you. Yes. Okay. I can be reached at Lisa Yvette Jones at gmail.com. Lisa Yvette, Y-V-E-T-T-E, Jones at gmail.com. I also have my website, Lisa Yvette Jones.com. And I can be reached telephonically one 248-952-8122. That's 
248-952-8122. I have three books, um, if I can show them. Absolutely. This one right here is Women Overcoming Through Writing. And those are those of us who um, wrote about what it took for us to write our story. And my title, a chapter in here is, who wants to hear my story? The world does. Mm. The world does. This is my first uh, book that I collaborated with. Um, and this one is Courageous Women Finding Strength During Their Storm. And we are telling stories from all areas of our life, from cancer to um, sex trafficking. Women have gone through, let me tell you. But we are now the people who are on the other side of what we've gone through. And that's what I really love to uh, minister to people. And then this is our latest one, Women of the Power Voice. For those of us who were selected, to be on, share the stage with Les Brown through his Power Voice Summit. We decided to come together and take all of our speeches and put them into written form. Oh, and wow. then for this one, From Cancer to Courageous, I'm Still Here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That's a testimony, Brains, of tenacity, of resilience, of courage, of strength, and faith. Because yes. we walk by faith, Brains, not by sight. Not by sight. And I am available for a complimentary coaching call. I love coaching. I am passionate about coaching. I also have a master's in counseling. So I do counseling as well. But coaching, leadership coaching is my absolute love and passion. Would love to um, sit down with anyone for 30 minutes complimentary time with me. Well, Please Brains, look. take advantage of it because she's on fire. I feel her passion. Yeah. I feel the enthusiasm. Makes me want to go back and get a nine to five. Okay. <laughs> but leadership yeah. comes in all different forms, whether you're an it entrepreneur, really you know, there's leadership in the home, there's leadership yeah. among your colleagues, there's leadership among teens. You know, we need to yeah. captivate uh, and motivate the millennials to have this same kind of gumption to move yes. forward in their life. So please yes. take advantage of that 30 minute consultation. And I need you to love, like, and share here on the edge with me. I need yes. you to go in and love, like, and share for um, Lisa's complimentary, as well as her website. Leave a comment, tell her what you need. You know, yes. we brought a lot of information, but really what is it that you need what is going to be your snippet what is going to be the words that you heard in this interview that are going to catapult you to the next level that's what we want to know here on the edge thank you so much lisa yvette jones for being thank here. thank you so me. much thank you and i appreciate you come back and keep me posted and motivated i certainly will and leaders i want you to know that self-care for leaders is not selfish either is necessary. Keep your cup full and serve people from your overflow. Wow. Bye, Brains. <laughs>